All right, the next form of energy that we're going to discuss is elastic potential energy. Elastic potential energy is energy that can be stored in a spring or a rubber band or, hey, even air. If you compress air, it can act like a spring. More on that later. Energy can be stored in a spring. This is called elastic potential energy. And we describe elastic potential energy using three letters, E, Got a little carried away there. That's E, P, E. Uh, and the person who first observed this is Robert Hooke. And he observed the rela relationship between the force necessary to compress the spring. So force is related to compression or stretching. Uh, and how much it was compressed. So force is related to, to, to compression. By the way, you can do two things to springs. You can compress them, make it shorter, scrunch it, or you can stretch it. And then both require a force and motion, so in both cases work is done. Uh, it was common for scientists to establish riddles to prove, prove ownership of new ideas in order to prevent others from taking credits. Uh, Hook reported his findings uh, of how spring works in terms of an anagram. So we have some letters. If you can unscramble these letters and form them into words, you won't have to take the final exam. Can you unscramble this? Oh, sorry, time's up. Uh, when we unscramble this, we end up with ut tensio, excuse my Latin, stick this. And in Latin it says, as the tension, so the force. So force is caused by tension. Or about, about, instead of saying that, force is related to displacement. Uh, and Hooke's law in equation form is totally intuitive. The farther you stretch a spring, x is stretch or compression, the more force is required. And that force depends on the amount of stretch, x, and it also depends on something called k, a proportionality constant as to how stiff the spring is. The negative sign tells us that when you pull one way, the spring will always pull the other to go back to the original position. So again, Hooke's law tells us the relationship between force, spring constant, and stretch. Uh, this is a graph that shows us force versus elongation. So on the y-axis we have force and on the x-axis we have elongation. And all it says is that if you stretch this spring farther it requires a bigger force. So as the elongation goes up as does force. So if we write elongation x if that increases so does force. And this spring if we were to create a force versus stretch or a force versus displacement graph. If you get a straight line, this spring obeys what's called Hooke's law. Now, if we have two if we have two springs, in this we're going to vary the displacement, the elongation, or the stretch. Small elongations are correspond with small forces. If we were to stretch that spring even farther, so we stretch it all the way out. We've pulled on it, pulled on it. It's really long. Big elongations, I'll draw down here, large elongations are associated with big forces. Because remember, increasing x will increase the force. And by the way, we get a straight line equation. So this obeys y equals m times x x is to yeah stretch the x axis x is the x axis is to stretch and the y axis is to force y is to force x is to stretch the slope of the line as we just stated using y equals m x the slope of the line m is the spring constant so how steep this line is tells us how stiff the spring is stiffer springs will have steeper lines and they require more force to stretch. And they can store more energy too. More on that later. So we just mentioned the slope of the line tells us how stiff the spring is. 
that's called the spring constant k and if you look here this is a spring that has a small slope it's easy to stretch this is a spring that has a large slope it's hard to stretch so if we draw a line in the sand our line of demarcation let's say this is our stretch this green line which represents a small constant will require a small force to stretch that certain distance if we continue up at that same distance of stretch we'll call it x again the blue one requires a large force. How stiff the spring is is called the spring constant. Okay, here's a question. Which spring requires a greater force to stretch? And we just did it before. Draw up and over. This blue one is a big force, a high number on the y-axis. And the green one would be a small force. So the answer is which force requires a greater, uh, which spring requires a greater force to stretch? The answer is blue.